But what she did was absolutely horrific. And if there were things that I could do to her that were legal, I would do them. So A.H. got put on blast by J.D.'s first wife. And the beautiful thing here is that Team A.H.'s media, they were forced to apologize. Why? Because they lied about what happened here. They omitted several things. Now, we're going to listen to part of this interview for context. The entire thing is on Popcorn Planet. Definitely check that out. And this is part of that media wanting to reframe everything on the one-year anniversary of JD versus AH. You notice they leave out that this is a charity fundraiser. Notice across the top, Make-A-Wish ends up making over $60,000 plus. Yeah, they leave that out, don't they? But let's listen to this. Crazy times, too. Crazy times, indeed. Hey there, by the way. Let's get started. Sounds like you ended things positively, at least, or came to those terms. Uh, what, ha- what what were you feeling when you saw She Who Shall Not Be Named uh, coming out there, putting these accusations and putting them through the ringer like 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 she did? I I mean, I had met her before. I'd been to parties at, their, you know, at his house, and... She seemed really nice and she was gorgeous and what's not to love. But, you know, as the time went by and I would hear things about her and she who shall not be named, um, you know, he didn't seem too happy all the time. I didn't see him a lot, so I can't really say. Um, I just, the things that, the things that affected me more were the things he said in court. Um, I probably broke down several times because I felt really bad for him. You know, he's very private, which is why I don't do interviews. He's very private. And I think for him to come out so wholeheartedly was what he really needed to do. And I thought it was either going to be a epic train wreck or it was going to go really well. In fact, I would call Isaac sometimes and say, what's happening? What's happening? Is he okay? And he said, don't worry, we're going to win this. And I would literally hang up the phone from Isaac and just walk around crying because I was terrified for him. I think it would have killed him. Well, maybe not. But it just broke my heart that somebody could do that to him. I mean, look, I'm no angel. I've done my share of shitty things to people and But what she did was absolutely horrific. And if there were things that I could do to her that were legal, I would do them. Now, there's another piece of this interview that I think is important for context as well. Again, make sure that you tune into Popcorn Planet, watch the entire thing, sub to the channel as well. But listen to this. Amazing. So just so we get so people understand, you were his first wife, correct? Very first one. And we got married in 1983. 1983. Wow. So yeah, what, what phase of Johnny? So that with 83, this was like, he was getting, it was, or that was early. That was way early. He still had a mullet and I actually, I cut it off because I was, <laughs> he's, we're living in Florida and he's got this mullet and I, I met him when he was 17. So, um, like I, I took all his bad things away from him. <laughs> I should say that. And I tried to give him, you know, like do new things because he wanted to get into this band called The Kids. And they were really kind of like hip, to use a really old lady term. But um, so I bought him new clothes and cut his hair. And the next thing you know, he was in the band. And and it just started from there. Yeah, it's but, amazing. He he, because he's uh, a lot of people obviously know him as actor, but he started, and it seems like even now his his heart's always been in the music. Is that a fair yeah. assumption? Yeah, he and he. It's funny because we used to sit in my car late at night and listen to Motown, and I don't know if he had heard much of it before. Before we met, I'm sure his mom played it or his sisters played it, but we literally literally sat for hours and hours and hours just listening to Motown music and. Um, you know, I've had quite an interesting life, so I would tell him these crazy stories about what I've done. And the funny thing is, is all the people that you hear about him working with now or meeting or hanging out with are all people I met when I was in my teens. So it's like Steven Tyler and 
Um, I knew Manson before he knew Manson and not that I'm friends with Manson, but we had this amazing mutual friend who passed away. And so I kind of knew all these people before he did. And it's just kind of come full circle. Now, the reason I added all of that, Ian, is because the media not only lies about what here, they leave out the context, they lie about what's said, but they get caught doing it. People, they put them on blast far and wide, too, and guess what? All of this Team age freaking media, right on the anniversary of JD versus AH, they are forced to apologize. Beautiful stuff, right? Now this, so it causes a lot. And I do mean a lot of backlash. And it should, by the way, because you see that framing there. They're framing it like J.D.'s first wife is threatening A.H. Like she's saying, oh, I'm going to do horrible things. When again, the context of this, it is nothing of the sort. And they know it. In fact, when the blowback comes, and it comes, it is loud to, guess what they do? They decide that they're not going to stand with their Team AH members. And that's probably the smartest decision, you know, because at the end of the day, all of this stuff, all of this Team AH nonsense, it doesn't sell. Why? Because the entire world saw how this stuff played out. They can lie all they want, but there are plenty of records, there are plenty of evidence, just like there's evidence for this. And well, look at this apology written to Laura B. Ari, contact factual inaccuracies. Dear Laura, thank you for your email. I can confirm that the article has been updated accordingly it may help to know that much of our content is produced under tight deadlines, and this can at times leave room for human error, which is unfortunately the case here. We appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Trust it resolves your concerns. Sincerely, Mail Online. And yeah, I'm glad that they resolved this, as in they wrote it up a different way, but it doesn't actually get rid of my concerns. Why? Because they say that this is caused by human error error when in fact all they had to do is go in and listen to the interview in fact somebody brought that to their attention and instead of sitting down instead of listening to this they decided that they were either going to pull it and they were going to go with that narrative which is possibly the case or they decided to go with someone else's narrative which is just as bad. You would think they would have learned from the case that they're connecting this to. <laughs> but anyway, let me know what you think about this. And as always, I appreciate the heck out of you. You make this stuff work. Thank you. Can't say that enough. Again, thank you. Want to help out the channel? Links are in the description. Check out everything. Make sure you sub here too. And call this mess out when you see it. Again, this is the anniversary of the JD versus AH trial. I think it's very fitting to see the media called out and the media have to correct something. But anyway, <laughs> I'll see you here. Thanks.